You have to change your direction in the fun that you engage in from time to time. Really? Yeah. That you sounds change naughty. That direction. Yeah. But that's a polite way of a judge saying it, right? Really? Instead of saying you got to get a little kinky every now and then in different ways. You do. I say you change the direction. Who tied me? He's exaggerating. Exaggerating? We went there, we cleaned the apartment, we had it all ready. I'm not debating that office, they didn't. You asked, didn't clean it until the 17th. Asked, it was a disaster. I have a point I need to get cleared up. Oh, you, you cleaned uh, it, so me, you're the one me. that left <laughs> on the bed? That's what you bought. Uh, why did you leave the sex toy in the middle of the bed, by the way? <laughs> That's just likely to provoke some sort of... He yeah. bought it. Thank you for watching and make sure to subscribe for more amazing, entertaining, delightful, great disciple content. Tell me where the freaks at. Hold up. I cleaned house. After a four year relationship, Rebecca left me with the apartment, damages to my vehicle, and ran off with a 55 year old guy. He's just bitter because I left him first. Telecommunications rep Aaron Dempsey is suing his ex-girlfriend for items she took when she moved out. Defendant Rebecca Bullard says she only took the gifts. Now, here's Judge Joe Brown. The plaintiff and the defendant had a relationship. They were living with each other. The plaintiff went out of town on business. When he returned, he found everything missing from his home including his girlfriend, who it appears ran off with somebody else and got married to them shortly afterwards. Not just somebody else, a guy sitting right beside her. The set of things that the plaintiff is concerned about includes a mountain bike of his, a cordless drill, a <laughs> George Foreman present. grill, unpaid damages to his vehicle. Deny that. And also three months rent deny that too she did <laughs> she says she broke it off because the plaintiff was not sufficiently supportive of her activities old guys uh, watch your language Excuse that's a hundred dollars right there what is this with the rent we're talking about here how much are we saying three months three months now was well, she on the lease yes she was your honor let me see the lease Come on up here, new husband. She's talking about you. And come on up here, ex-girlfriend. You might as well stand up. Let's see what's going on here. Now, nah, let's see. Rental agreement. Between February 7th last year and February 28th of this year. When did you move out? I moved out on November 30th. Without giving notice to myself, besides a phone call, see you bye, or the leasing office had an opportunity to break the lease in December. Actually, I you tried. Had, I had the you apartment had. cleaned and ready for them to come and inspect it and get everything cleared off, but he decided to stay. I can't help I did that. not he decide did not to stay. Yeah. The weekend I came to. back. Then how come I kept paying utility bills for three months after that? You did not pay the you utility bill. Then how I come the I have bill. the pg and &E bill for three twenty three? Because you never turned it off. You, 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 you took the, the phone. I left. I moved into Robbins and Matt's place. The reason why let me I see have... your bill and let me see yours. Let's see if we can get this cleared up. You two don't. I basically paid a good the rent for the last three months. She tied me into the lease because her name is on the lease. I then tried to give the thirty days me? notice, but the leasing office said because her name's on the lease, she has to sign. She took me into the airport November 29th, which was on a Monday. I get the breakup call on Tuesday. The first thing I did was go and try to take care of the lease. Because her name is on the lease, I could not get out of the lease. The leasing office basically said, in order to break the lease, I had to pay a break lease fee. The only stipulation was that I had to get her to sign. I called her and talked to her on December 2nd. So how much did you have to pay to get out of this lease agreement? It was 15 something. All right. I took a copy of the lease to her mom. I called her. And I was like, what's handle this? She's like, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. She had four days. She, yeah, you no, had four had days to sign the damn ready. lease. And you did I, not. I had everything clean and ready. And I had the paper. 
But you didn't sign the paper. You had four days. In, on December 5th, the day I flew out, I went to the leasing office. I was like, has she signed the 30-day the notice? So essentially, the break lease fee turned into January's rent, and that's why I'm suing for the full amount of February, because she chose not to sign that 30-day notice. I lost but the paper. But you got charged. She lost the paper. The, me, you could have drove. A new paper. Well, well, I, I asked them to, and they said that oh, they never gave me the information on how to get it. Well, Being proactive. Like your and I called her mom. I, I called her. her. I left the paperwork at her mom's house. What else am I supposed to do? You tied me. He's exaggerating. Exaggerating? We went there, we cleaned the apartment, we had it all ready. I'm not debating that. Office, they didn't, you asked, didn't clean it until the 17th. Asked, it was a disaster. I have a point I need to get cleared up. Oh, you, you cleaned uh, it, so me, you're the one me. that left on. on the bed? On. That's what you bought. Uh, why did you leave the sex toy in the middle of the bed, by the way? That's just likely to provoke some sort of... He yeah. bought it. Animus to develop. She's the one that on the, the Stop coffee it. table. It's another hundred. He bought it. He left it at the apartment when she was clean, and she's what I'm going to do with that. She just threw it on the bed, and we walked out. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. She how she I left the, she left the sex toy, but did not leave the cell phone to where I could have returned it, it in time and got my money back. Well, so I, had, had, I was you returned the paying. cell phone December eighth. Maybe because you turned it off. I didn't it, return it off until the seventeenth until I found the sex toy on the bed. <laughs> Can I add one more thing here? There seems to be a misconception here in that she left him for me, but the truth of the matter is she left him because of me, because it's a known fact that women in an abused or suppressed relationship usually oh, say so you're it saying because I abused they her. do not know that you're they have You're saying I abused her. He had her tied I up I have never car. verbally he had or tied physically up with abused you. He had her tied up I'm sorry. in every aspect of her life to include food at the end of the month before she was... Yes, he, I've, I've observed I that you sort of payday. overburden someone but anyway, with obligations to the point that they'll help us. Yeah. Options. <laughs> but at the same time, I never cheated on him. Um, you, his you, ex, his she moved friend Matt from Carroll. our apartment into his apartment. What well, else was I supposed to think? About Matt, if I moved from his, your, you the out apartment, because married. you did, because I moved in there December first. Well, but that's December what I'm saying. 2nd. But if I'd moved in, would you say I cheated on you with Matt? No, because you had your own bedroom there. Yeah, she had her own so? bedroom in my place. In a exactly. one bedroom, one bedroom apartment. Yeah, and yeah, I, I slept, on, slept the on the couch. Oh, okay. Uh, what's the and point? That's a fact. Wait, wait, wait. What's the point? Nobody's married. We'll be right back with Judge Joe Brown. We're back with Judge Joe Brown. The plaintiff in this case says when his ex-girlfriend moved out on him, she took his belongings and left him with the bills. Let's take a look. What kind of mountain bike do you get for 107.35? Walmart special. A woman's mountain bike. You claim this is a gift to you, so you simply took a previously given gift, the mountain bike. Well, and how long has that lady's mountain bike been around the premises before you took it? Mm, about four or five months. How long had you two been living together? Ten months, maybe. How long ten months you, total. Ten, ten months total. How long had you two been courting each other before you moved in? We were, About uh, three years. years. That's probably a gift. It wasn't a gift. I'm not suing her for the $5,000 worth of jewelry or all the clothes and all that stuff much. that I've purchased in the past. Um, I bought it as a pair. We were supposed to go out. It was like the furniture. Why are you That's making a fuss over $100 mm -hmm. It's depreciated anyway? I, I can so. tell you that. Just look at the statements from her, her affidavits she brought in. All he did was turn around and harass her family continuously, and everything that he's doing right now, he specifically told them, all the way down to programming her court date on her birthday because he told her family he's going to ruin her birthday along with ruining her life financially and take everything she ever owns because she had the gall to leave him. I said this take has nothing everything to do with she money. ever owns because it's she doesn't harassment. have anything. I have a she question. She doesn't have a job. Him. Why'd you leave him? He didn't care enough. He. My wallet wasn't big enough. No, it has nothing to do with money. This is. <laughs> oh, was it? It had months, nothing to do with money. That's why. It's not talking A to week me after breaking up with me. Because he didn't want to me, deal with me. You. I mean, he. You quit he your job care. and let your sugar daddy take care of he you. He didn't care. Somebody had to take care of him. That remark is the key remark. Take care of her. He yeah, would not he do that. Well, this case has got nothing to do with. He save money on his own vehicle. 
How? Because How? he forced, he pressured me into getting rid of my own personal vehicle. I pressured her so to he drive a to brand new vehicle. vehicle. So he wouldn't have to pay maintenance fees. So he wouldn't have to do all this. So he wouldn't have to put no, money. No, so you didn't have pay. to pay four hundred dollars a month in car insurance and car payments. Car payment and insurance. I wasn't paying four hundred dollars a month. Jeez, plus, I let her drive my brand new vehicle without paying the payment. Than I ever did my own vehicle. Hell, I required her to maintain it. That's all I required her to do with maintain the vehicle. Here, drive a new vehicle. I told you before. Pay half the insurance. That I'm hard on vehicles. I told you that straight up front. And yeah, you want 20, to car, and you take care of it. Yeah, 20,000 miles in 10 months on my car is what you put on it. I told you that straight yeah, up front. Yeah, you he left the car with steel belts car, showing on the tires. It. Those tires when I got had my car a 20,000 mile life expectancy. No, they didn't. There was 37,000 yeah. miles on the odometer when I left it to you. So no, if you, you had didn't. a problem with that, why didn't you tell me that way no, back you didn't. in the beginning? Yes. Wait, excuse me. All right, let's go over here. What do you have to add to this mix? Okay, fine. The relationship's over. Then say the relationship's over. Let's get our financial responsibilities out of the way. Let's get this lease out of the way. Packing up your stuff, leaving, and saying the apartment's yours is not an adult way to end a relationship. And he contacted her. He was staying with us while he was trying to contact her to get her to sign the paper to get out of the lease. It's a cold, cold world, but it took me in. It fathered me in ways, had to look around. Is suing Cassandra Jones for $2,500 after he says her roommate's dog bit him during a makeout session. Don Williams, you're looking at repayment of $2,500 in medical expenses from Cassandra Jones. I've read and considered your case, sir. Tell me your story. Well, as the local most popular bartender at our college sports bar, the most popular, most popular, and the, clearly the one with the most humility. Absolutely, well. Your Honor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was. I know where this is going. All right, go uh, ahead. It was one dollar drink night. We and got a live one here, Deputy. Tom. Cassandra had caught my eye since I first started working at the bar. How long have you been working there, sir? I've been working there for three years, Your Honor. And how long had you been noticing Miss Jones? One year, I've been noticing her. One year, okay. And so over the course of that year, would you all exchange uh, conversation? I mean, and... women flirt with me a lot, but Cassandra, I would say, would be one because of the Because you're top... so charming. A absolutely. I, that's what I thought to myself. Absolutely. And I could tell that. I totally see it. With, with a little work, Your Honor, I felt like Cassandra in, and in I could minute, be together. In a minute, Deputy Thomas is going to start flirting with you. You're so hot. <laughs> I'm blushing. Were you interested in Prince Charming over here? Yes, I was interested. You were interested? Yes. Oh, okay. She was. All right. And... Um, <laughs> Why did I even bother asking her? Thank you. Of course he was. <laughs> Who is it? All right, so, and, and uh, what, do you recall what happened on that particular evening, ma'am? Yeah, I went to the bar and basically I had a couple of drinks. I What's decided a couple? to tell him, like two or three. Five two or six, three. Your Honor. No, that is not true. Two or three? Yeah. And were they little drinks or were they big drinks? Little drinks. Little drinks, yeah. okay. And did you go alone? No, I went with Maria, my roommate. Okay. And so you went with someone else, and you got to the bar, and then what happened? Um, I asked him if he wanted to come to my house to hang out, because I you like him. You asked him to come to your house to hang out? Yeah. What does that mean to you? Well, I was I drunk what, at the time. I know what that so... means. When a, when a man hears a woman say, come to my house to hang out. I guess he probably thought he was going to have sex with me. And what did you infer when you meant, come hang out with me? I meant just hang out, get to know each other better. I was drunk, so I really wasn't thinking. So when you said to him, come over to my house, you were going to wait for him until his shift ended, correct? No, I went home. You went home? I gave him my address to come after his shift. I see. All right. And is that correct, sir? That is correct. Um, I told her I'd only come over, though, if Maria was there, too. So there was... Now, why did you need to... I thought you were focused on Miss Jones. I was, but at that point in time, um, she, Cassandra, like I said, was being very flirty that night, and I figured... Well, what's that have to do with Maria? Well, Your Honor, it is my goal to have a threesome in life, so agree with her agreeing that Maria what was going to be there. A, that's a goal to have, huh? Coming up on America's Court... Maria was also at the bar. Is this Maria here? Yes. Ma'am, step forward. And what's your last name? Schmidt. Schmidt. What's the relationship between the two of you? We're just friends. We're roommates also. Your friends and roommates. Yeah. And so you were at the bar as well? Uh, yes, Your Honor. All right. And then you got home, the two of you, and then you get there. I get there, yes. And then what happened? I get there. Uh, some romance was in the air. They were playing some music, and I could really... Romance with who? Cassandra and Maria. No. Okay. 
<laughs> That's not how it was. So, All right. And then what happened? Well, Maria was acting a little weird, and I could tell she was uncomfortable by the circumstances, but I wasn't going to give up hope of having both of them in bed. But Cassandra and I actually ended up going into the room. Maria stayed on the couch. You went into Miss Jones' bedroom. Absolutely. You all have separate bedrooms. Yeah. And then what happened? Um, we started to make out, and we were so talking. Hang, we so we're past out. hanging out now. Yeah. <laughs> and you knew what was going on. We were both drunk, so yeah. We started talking, and we made out. And my dog was in the room, and he had a problem with my dog from the get-go, like when he first came. What kind of dog do you have? It's a beagle. All right, and, and who had a problem with the dog? A uh, Don. Did you have a problem with the dog? Your Honor, when I had saw the dog in the room and we were making out, it wasn't the kind of threesome that I had imagined it would be. <laughs> okay, you got me on that one. So, you got me on that one. I mean, a okay. man can only dream so well, far. Well, blame it on the alcohol, huh? There All you right. go. And so, it the wasn't... Dog, so the beagle, what's the dog's name? Rufio. Rufio? Yes. All right, so the dog was in the room? And um, basically, the dog was on the bed and he kind of was on his side with his clothes off. And I was like, you need to go because this is getting a little bit too crazy. I'm still uncomfortable. What was crazy? He took his clothes off and my clothes were on. All right. That's not yeah, true, Your Honor. So. Mm -mm. Let me hear from her. And then, like, all, and then he just turned a little bit and my dog just bit him twice. Where did the dog bite you, sir? Well, my pants were off, Your Honor, but my pants didn't magically come off. Cat took them off. I mean, she wanted this body and she wanted to take them off and she did. I, I didn't magically okay, take off my pants. Okay, you just need to stop. You need to stop. You are, I don't know, I don't know what planet you're living on, but everybody doesn't want you. I'm just saying. Judge Ross's to me, she removed your clothing. Yes, she ruined my pants, Your Honor. So when the dog bit you, the dog bit directly into flesh? Yeah, that's what it felt like. It, it felt And where like were you death. bitten? On the left cheek of my buttocks. <laughs> So even, so even the dog wanted you. <laughs> Apparently. And so, so ultimately, you suffered some injuries, sir. I needed to go to the hospital. You ASAP. have proof of your uh, expenses, sir? I do. Let me see that. Uh, who took him to the hospital, Ms. Jones? Maria. I did. All right. So you had to have stitches and medication totaling uh, the $2,500. Based on the evidence and the testimony before this court, you're inviting someone to your home. You've got this pet you have a responsibility to exercise a reasonable duty of care. You failed miserably on multiple levels. Therefore, judgment will be in favor of the plaintiff in this case in the amount of $2,500, and that is the order. We're done here.